Um, yes, my name is Pierre Novelli, which I will explain. <laughs> it does need to be explained. Pierre is a French first name, Novelli is an Italian second name, and I'm neither. <laughs> nor is any member of my family, nor have I ever lived in either of those countries, nor do I speak either of those languages. My name is fully irrelevant to me in everything I've ever done. And it's hard to spell over the phone, so that's fun. Lots of bonuses with this name. And because my first name is French, I get to have the same conversation with everyone I ever meet. All the time. I'm really good at it now. I've got it down pat. Hello, my name is Pierre. Oh, are you French? No. Oh, but your name's French. What did I just say? Basically, I tried not to make it a greatest hits thing. Like, often with American stand-ups, it'll just be like, all their best jokes from the last year. And I thought I'd try and make it more of a show. Barely. Um, so, <laughs> the, the connecting themes are uh, my experience of sort of becoming like British, like integrating into the UK, because I'm from Johannesburg originally, like immigrant, being an immigrant, and what I got up to when I was unemployed just during the day for like a year, sort of the things that resulted from that. So, those are probably the two central central themes. When you're a South African, it's, 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 it's interesting because people assume you're a racist when you're a white South African, which is what I am. Um, now what that means is that people assume I'm racist because of the color of my skin and where I'm from. <laughs> so let the irony fill the room there, shall we, everyone? Yeah. Now what this means is it creates a very interesting paradox because it means that as an immigrant, the welcome I've received in this country from racists has been overwhelmingly positive. I think they think of me as outside expertise. <laughs> you know, like I'm a consulting racist. <laughs> we'll let him move here, we'll learn his tricks, and then we will deport him, he is still foreign. Um, so I'm very popular with racists, I'm like the racist whisperer, you know, I can draw them in, gain their trust, feed them sugar cubes, and they let their racist hair down and say horrifying things to me. Uh, and expect me to agree. Well, obviously, the earliest comedy anyone ever comes across is obviously something like The Simpsons or something that's on TV in general. But some of the first comedy I found on my own was The Goon Show, which is you know from the 1950s, like Spike Milligan, Peter Sellers kind of stuff, um, which is weird for like a 10-year-old to be listening to on tape. But that's what I did. But yeah, so I, I, I live in London now. I like living in London. My, I, you need to. Well, I like it as much as anyone does. I think. Um, it's okay, isn't it? You need to figure out ways to let you sort of survive living here in London. I like to peek at other people's Oyster card balances when they go through in front of me. <laughs> a small moment of voyeurism in my day. I was behind a guy once and he had 81 pounds on his Oyster card. And this was in Wood Green Station. It wasn't in Barnes or something. This is in Wood Green. What was he planning? <laughs> My reaction, I saw 81 pounds come out, my reaction was, ooh, ooh, I hope you enjoyed your day on the tube, your majesty. <laughs> your trip to zone a million went well, I hope. <laughs> it's the ultimate like, difficulty like, uh, that I can do. Obviously, like, for me, really, the ultimate difficulty would be like, some sort of Olympian event. <laughs> like, if I really wanted an undoable challenge, I could take up like, a sprinting or something. <laughs> We're backstage at the ICC. I'm so excited to be here at Calm Comedy. In the midst of a zombie apocalypse, she's dead. This is my normal voice. <laughs> I don't want to work with this little purple shit anymore. Come back up after me when this is more hairy. <laughs>